All right, here we are, TPE331 engine in a Jetstream 31. And we are having a look at the propeller controls, or the engine controls. We have two controls. We have our power levers here, and we have our speed or condition levers over here. We're gonna put them in the start position because we're going to, I'm gonna walk you through what happens during a start of the left-hand engine. During the start of a, the engine on this aircraft, we have an option to either do a ground start, which would use the starter generator to rotate the engine, or I can do an air start, which would use the unfeathering pump to take the propeller, propeller out of feather in flight and begin a start sequence, just using the air flowing through it. So the, in this case, we're going to do a ground start like the pilot is just about to, to take off or on their first flight of the day. The pilot is going to select the engine that he wants to start. So he's going to select that on, and then he's going to press the start sequence. Once the engine starts to rotate, the sequence is automatic. And the and our job as an aircraft maintenance technician, if we were starting, is to make sure we keep this, we take this little cover off, and we'd have our finger ready to shut the engine down if something goes wrong. Stop the sequence. So the start sequence, in order to know that the start sequence is occurring, the engine will start rotating. You'd have an indication of that. Then the when the fuel is introduced, you'd see the fuel flow start to climb. And as fuel ignites, you would get your EGT starting to climb. And you your job is to make sure it does not climb over the red line. And then this is your as the engine starts to spin, its RPM is going to be shown here. And our torque is here, the torque meter, which reads from zero to 120%. Okay, so that would be what happens during the start sequence. This is the position the levers would be in before the start occurs. And what's gonna happen then is the underspeed governor would stop the acceleration of the engine at idle speed, probably about 70% of the engine's regular rated RPM. That's all fine and dandy. Now the pilots have started the engine. However, this aircraft has start latches that have latched the propeller in the start position. So the next move the pilot's going to have to do is test the overspeed governor on the engine. So with this, because the start latches are engaged, there's nothing that the engine can do to stop the engine from accelerating. So, uh, the propeller governor cannot limit it if, it if the propeller blades can't move. The, so the pilot will advance the power lever and watch the RPM and will actually overspeed the engine by a couple percent, about 4%. There's a little arrow there. The engine should stop accelerating, saying that the overspeed governor has stopped the fuel flow and the overspeed governor test is complete. And that's good. Then the pilot can pull, will pull the power lever back and then they're going to select a little bit of reverse and that's going to allow the start latches to disengage. And then when the pilot starts to select forward mode, the propeller will be at the flight idle stop or the prime blade angle. If it was the PT-6, we call that prime blade, flight, flight stop. Okay, pilot's going to, now let's say the pilot wants to taxi, then they just push this power lever up and they'll have a blade angle of maybe, um, maybe 10 degrees or so blade angle to work with. And they're working with a fixed pitch propeller as they move this throttle up and down, uh, the power lever up and down, as long as they don't get into the propeller governing range. So that's, at manually adding fuel in on top of where the underspeed governor is set. The pilots want to take off. You'll notice it says on this, it says flight. So the pilots are going to move, the pilot's going to move this lever up to flight idle. Now the underspeed governor is going to go to its high RPM stop, roughly 95%. 
and it's going to stop there. So the propeller RPM would then go to the bottom of this green arc at 95% and it'll stop there. And that's not fast enough or not producing enough power for this engine to take off, for this aircraft to take off. The next move the pilot's gonna to have to do is move the power levers forward and manually introduce fuel to increase the RPM of the engine. As they increase the RPM of the engine, the propeller governor will take over at 100% because this lever is connected to the propeller, propeller governor and it is commanding 100%, it's all the way forward. So the pilot will push this power lever forward The propeller RPM is going to go to 100% and at that point we're in alpha range and the we will not get an acceleration of the RPM anymore but our EGT if we, and our fuel flow will continue to climb along with our torque. So as the pilot climbs or accelerates the engine or puts more power to it, they'll get the torque as close to the red line as possible for takeoff. After takeoff, the pilot is going to, and once he's at a safer altitude, he's gonna to begin to reduce power to a lower power setting. And then to reduce the noise in the cockpit, they're gonna pull back on this lever. And when they pull back on this lever, the prop RPM will decrease, can only decrease in flight from 100 to 95. So even if they pull this lever all the way back, in flight, the, the lowest it can go is 95%. If the pilot was to pull the power levers back with this lever back, then, then the underspeed governor would come on at a low RPM and that's at, that's at the taxi. So typically these levers are run up in the higher end here. So that would probably be 100% and likely in flight, this is back, this is 95%. So the actual movement that the pilot does in the cockpit is just this. And the only reason they're going to reduce that RPM in, is to decrease the amount of noise that the aircraft makes in flight, make it a little more comfortable for the passengers. All right, so now this lever is in the full forward range and the underspeed governor, or let's, we're gonna do a landing. So now the pilot goes into descent this to descent, you're gonna pull this power lever back for idle during the during the descent or a low power setting, but definitely during landing, they're gonna have the power levers back all the way to the stop. And and these levers will be full forward to make max power for a go around. Just move these both together. Okay, pilot wants to select reverse now. There's these little pins and they lift up on that. So pilot lands, the underspeed governor, power levers back fuel flow has been decreased by the manual fuel valve but the underspeed governor is selected to a high range so it's commanding 95 percent rpm for the for the engine and the pilot decides they're going to select reverse well as they select reverse they'll go through the engine's going to maintain the underspeed governor will maintain 95 percent n1 and the or sorry n1 there's only one speed on this engine and uh, as you start to select reverse, the propeller blade pitch is going to change. And because the beta valve or the sleeve on the prop pitch control is sliding aft, no, sliding forward when I move these levers back and the piston has to move farther forward to move the, the propeller piston has to move farther forward to move the prop uh, beta tube farther forward to reposition it. Okay, and the pilot can select a little bit of reverse, or they can select a lot, a lot, a lot of reverse. And the cool thing is that because we're just moving the propeller pitch, as the load increases in reverse on this engine, the underspeed governor maintains 95% RPM. So if I put more load on, the underspeed governor applies more fuel. Then the more fuel is going to um, keep keep the engine. Uh, at that RPM. So what it does is it uses the fuel control to control the RPM in reverse. And that's how it works. 
So pilots, as they select reverse, they're gonna pull backwards, 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 full reverse, engine, aircraft slows down, they'll go back into ground mode or uh, they might go a little bit lower, they might operate in that range on the ground. And then once they go to take off, power levers full forward, reverse. And the last part is the feather. Now this here is the, um, when the pilots have a problem with the engine and they need to feather the engine, they're going to pull on this turn and pull on this lever. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna manually shut off the fuel with the manual shut off valve first, and then it's gonna pull on the feathering valve and feather the engine. This aircraft is also equipped with an unfeathering pump that will allow the propeller to unfeather if the start latches are missed during the shutdown because the pilots didn't select reverse. If that occurs, the pilots would move the power lever into the reverse position and then they would trigger the switch into the direction that they're trying to, which engine they're trying to unfeather. And once it's on the latches, they can release it and then attempt to start. Here again, there's our torque meter, our RPM, EGT, our oil pressure, oil temperature, gauges, fuel flow, and fuel quantity indicators. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.